Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hi my name is Janelle and I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday and in today's video I was gonna film another video and I was just gonna like sit down and get right into the video and like do my makeup and not show it to you guys but I miss you guys so much and I just really wanted to sit down and talk with you guys because I've been pre-filming so many of my videos that I feel like I haven't been able to just like chat with you guys so I figured I would film myself getting ready for the video that I'm about to film but not only that, I wanted to show you guys my updated, more like real life soft glam look. So this is the look we got going on today. I have makeup on, I looked it up, but it's not overpowering. And I wanted to show you guys more of like my realistic glam looks because I feel like so many times when I film videos, they're just like these super extra over the top makeup looks with like a ton of foundation, powder, and all of that, which I honestly, hardly ever do in real life. I've been wearing less and less makeup and now on days when I go to apply like a full face of makeup like how I would used to, I'm like this is way too much. So over the past months during the pandemic and all that, like it's really allowed me time to play with makeup, play with different textures and things that are gonna work well with my skin. So over the past six months, this is a concoction that I've come up with and that I've been super happy with like all of the products and how they layer together and you know, how to give myself that glam look without using a crap ton of makeup like you see all over Instagram and YouTube. So, yeah, that was a really long intro. But anyways, with that being said, if you want to see how I got this look, definitely please keep watching. Before you go anywhere, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when I upload. I love you all so much. Also, thank you all so much for 20k. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention, so since I've been pre-filming so many videos, I haven't been able to share with you guys that my sister started a YouTube channel. Finally, I've been begging her. Her and her husband started one. I will leave links to some of their videos down below. They just started maybe like a month ago and they've already uploaded a ton of great videos. Their content is so good, especially for like just starting out their channel, you have to check them out. The stuff that they share so far have even been so helpful for me. So definitely check out her family's channel. It's so cute, you won't regret it. Subscribe. I'm like super talkative because I haven't talked to you guys in so long, but like I feel like I'm talking too much. So yeah. Moisturizing my skin, I use my CeraVe moisturizer and I use some vitamin C serum as well. Skin prep is so important. I know I rarely talk about this in my videos, but you want to make sure you're moisturizing your skin. That's going to determine like the products and stuff that you use with it and how things are going to wear on your skin. So make sure you have a like skincare regimen that works good for your skin, that keeps your skin like... I like for my skin to be tacky before I apply makeup. If it feels like dry or tight, my makeup's not gonna sit right. If it feels too oily, my makeup's gonna slide. So how your skin is prepped is so important to your makeup routine. So now I'm going to go ahead and actually prime it using my e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. It looks super janky. I mentioned I was out of town for a few weeks, so my makeup is still literally like away in <laughs> my makeup bag. I still have my brushes and my little travel brush thing. So I'm just working right out of that bag because I was too lazy to go in to where my other makeup was. I was like, you know what? We're just gonna make it work with what I had in here. And I like to just push the primer into my skin. I'm using this like e.l.f. stippling brush. It just kind of buffs it out real fast. I also like to use my finger sometimes if I really want to get it in there, but for me lately, I've been all about like quick, easy makeup. Like I don't like to spend too much time buffing out my foundation or shadow or anything like that. Like, I like for everything to be super quick and easy. So moving on, I'm going to be using my RCMA concealer. This is actually a foundation palette, but I use it as concealer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I think this color should match my skin, and I'm gonna use it to just kind of spot correct these pimples. Now, this step isn't always necessary. Like, cause I feel like when I go in with foundation, it can sometimes move it. But this is like a me thing. I like to erase my blemishes first. So that way I don't load on a bunch of foundation where it's literally not needed. So I just do like a really light sweep just so that I know that just cause I have two pimples here, it doesn't mean that I have to cake on foundation all over my face. So I just like it to be out of sight, out of mind. Like I said, I normally have to go back in with the concealer after I do my foundation. But this just helps 
me get out of my head of thinking that I need like a million foundation. So you guys, I have so much stuff that I want to share with you guys, but I can't share it with you guys yet because I still don't have definitive answers. Oh yeah, I'm just taking a little bit of that concealer here just to kind of cancel out some of the bluer tones. And I'm actually going in with like a darker color in the palette. And that'll just help cancel out the bluer tones. But yeah, I have so much that I want to share with you guys, but I can't yet because I don't have definitive... Well, I kind of do have definitive answers, but I'm waiting on a couple things before I share the news with you guys. So, um, yeah. But it's like driving me crazy because I feel like you guys are like my friends and family and like I wouldn't leave my family and friends out of the loop for this long. So I really want you guys to be in the loop, but I'm just waiting on a couple of things. Where'd it go? Hold on, I gotta run and grab something real quick. I'll be right back. And while I'm grabbing something, I'm gonna grab some chat sticks so you guys don't have to look at these crusty lips the whole time because that is not cute. So for foundation today, lately, most days I don't wear foundation. On most days I just do like the concealer that I did to spot correct and then I'll do like a brightening concealer underneath of my eyes. And that's it as far as like, I don't do an all over face covering. So as you can see, like once I spot conceal, my skin still looks good, especially for like in-person interactions. It's not gonna look too cakey, but if it's like a special occasion and I wanna wear, wear more makeup, this is what I do. And what's so crazy is that like my special occasion makeup that requires more makeup still isn't nearly as much makeup as I use when I'm filming. Because when I'm filming, I have my studio lights. Um, I have to layer on a lot more product, but I've come to the realization that you guys or other viewers watching aren't filming and you guys don't know that. So I never want you guys to, you know, put on as much makeup as I'm doing to film thinking it's going to be super flattering in person and then you're walking around with like a thick cake face, you know what I mean? So whenever I want to look snatched but still snatural, <laughs> natural, this is what I do. So I use my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter Foundation love this stuff it's so good this actually isn't a foundation though it's a skin tint i've talked about this a million times what i'll do is i'll do about like two little swabs of it on my hand like this and then i'll just mix in one pump of an actual foundation so normally i'll use my l'oreal true match lumi i love this one mixed in um if i'm a little bit tanner just because my l'oreal true match is a little bit light which i I think it'll still be too light for me now, but we'll see. Then I'll go in, all of my makeup is so dirty because it's only my makeup bag, but then I'll use my Pat McGrath foundation. This looks so janky. Like I said, it's just been floating around in my makeup bag. I'll use this one. I like using, um, both of these are super lightweight foundations, but they'll give the right amount of coverage to the Charlotte Tilbury without making my skin look too heavy. Um, I'm gonna use my L'Oreal True Match Lumi in W5. I'm gonna do one pump of that. And then if it's too light, it's okay because my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter is a lot warmer and darker than my skin. What I do is I take this um, e.l.f. Dual Fiber Dome Brush. I recently picked this up and I love the shape of it. Basically, any sort of fluffier dual fiber brush is going to pick up the product, diffuse it, absorb some, and it's not going to let it like pack on your skin or go on too heavy. It's going to give you more of like a airbrush, lightweight finish. So I just kind of like work it on the brush like that and then start buffing it in my skin. And I'm doing more buffing motions versus like patting or packing motions because I just want it to be a really light veil on my skin. Lately, I've been really opposed to like super cakey, thick, heavy, matte, powdery makeup. Like, I don't know why, that was my jam for such a long time. And then ever since like quarantine happened, I've just haven't been into that. So like, see, I buffed it out on this side See on my skin, it like covers it, but my skin still looks like skin. I think the reason why I've gotten so into this makeup is because during quarantine when I was going so long without makeup, I got used to myself without it. So then whenever I like pack on a bun, I just felt like a clown, like it just felt way too heavy. And then it was honestly just like, I felt weird going out in public with like a thick, mask over my face. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a super full glam moment, but I think you can have a full glam moment without having your skin feel like super thick and heavy. It just looks like a layer of just like fresh, healthy skin, which is what I have been absolutely loving. Lately, what I like to do, the two concealers that I have been loving are my Milani Conceal and Perfect Concealer 
And then also my Jouer Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer. The Jouer one is super creamy and hydrating, but it is a very full coverage, so a little goes a long way. And then this one's more of like a satin finish. Um, it is a full coverage too, and it's a little bit more matte than this one though. This one I feel like mimics the texture of skin more. This one does, but not as much. This one's also a fraction of the cost. I'm gonna use my Jouer one just because I haven't used this in a while on camera because I wipe off most of the extra product. So I like to like dot it here, 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 where I have that darkness, that's where I'm cutting it, and here. I'll put some more on my nose, here, and here. In here. It's gonna do a really light amount because since this is a fuller coverage product, I don't need to do like the whole triangle action going on. And it's funny because like I've been doing my makeup like this for years, but like I said, I do it whenever my makeup isn't gonna be on camera. But I mean, essentially, not many of you guys are doing your makeup for camera, so this is just like good full coverage in life makeup. What I do is I take my Real Technique setting brush. It's a nice fluffy. Slightly dense but smaller brush so it'll allow me to spread out the product um, so that way I'm not just like pushing it in place and I still can get more of that highlighted finish. So I just take a light hand holding my brush further down and I just start kind of like feathering it out. I realize that I like to do this first before I go in with a beauty sponge because when I go in with the beauty sponge right away, my concealer for some reason becomes so harsh and obvious. So I like to buff it out first and then go in with a beauty blender. I feel like my makeup routine has changed like 50 million times ever since like the pandemic and then being in quarantine and now things are opening up again. But I don't know, I feel like it's given me a lot of time to play with makeup and figure out what actually works with my skin versus just kind of like rushing every day to do it. So it's been nice. So if it's a special occasion and then I want like even more brightness and all of that under my eyes, then I'll go in with my Pat McGrath Lab Concealer. This one is in the shade L7. This concealer is like five shades too light for my skin. I wanna get this concealer in a darker color because I do love the finish of it. It is a very full coverage concealer though, so you only need a little bit. However, lately I've been loving to use this really light color just in like certain parts, just to lift it. Before I used to take like a super bright concealer and put it all under my eye and it just kinda like, it just, it looks too much. But if I take a dot of this and just place it where like I want a brighter eye here or where I wanna lift my face, it does such a difference. So what I've been loving to do is I'll take a little bit on the back of my hand and I pick some up with that same brush, just like a tiny bit and I'll like dot it kind of where I want it. And I'm finished buffing it out in a second. I get in here because I want my this part to be nice and bright and then I like to lift my face here. I'm going to put a little bit extra down my nose, a tiny bit on my chin, but I'm working with like barely any product. Like I still have product left over. And then I take my sponge, dip into some more of whatever concealer is left on the back of my hand with my sponge. That way when I go in with my sponge, it's not gonna lift product. Now I'm just gonna lightly pat it, like really lightly, just kind of buff it in. And I find that get, this gives me way more of an effective highlight. This concealer is like insane amount of coverage though. But I love the finish of it because it's still very like creamy and hydrating. And you see how beautiful and like bright it just made my under eye. So now what I like to do is I'll go in with my e.l.f. Kimmel concealer. Oh my gosh, do you see that? I've just like killed this concealer. I love using it for contour. What I like to do is I'll take it on the back of my hand, just like a small dot, work it into like a fluffy synthetic brush. Since this is a cream, it will like blend best with a synthetic brush, but I like taking a fluffy one, that way it's not packing on too much and it just kind of melts in my skin and like keeps that whole vibe of like your skin but better glam skin, you know what I mean? So I'll work it into the brush Start it here first. That way it's not too harsh once I get to 
my cheeks. And what I love to do is like right where the arch of my brow is, I work that back into my temple to help kind of like lift my face. And then it also will help me blend my eyeshadow in a couple seconds. I'll work it like back and forth in there as well. You see how much that like already lifted my face? Get under here. Whenever it blotches like that, I don't know if you can see the spot, I just take my foundation brush and like blend that out. So now that most of the product has work worked in the brush, I'm gonna start like right where my ear is and just kind of pat it. Whatever's left under my jaw. And then what I also do is I just take the tip of the brush and work that on the tip of my nose and also on the sides. And then I take my sponge, no extra product, and just make sure that everything is really blended together. I don't have any harsh, intense lines. Now I'm gonna go back in with the Jouer concealer, or you can use any concealer. Take a tiny bit on the back of my hand again. And with the same brush that we used to buff out the concealer to begin with, this is the Real Technique setting brush. I'm just gonna work it on the brush and then use that to just clean up underneath of the bronzer. And I'm starting it where my lip is and bringing it up toward like this part of my ear. Then what I like to do is take a cream blush. So important to use a cream blush. Lately, I've been loving this Bella Pierre Cosmetics Coral Cheek Lip Stain. It's a nice, like, pretty corally color. You can use any cream blush. My Maybelline one that I love, I also use that one a lot. Um, but lately, I've just been using this just because it's small and it's super easy to travel with. I don't even know if they still make it, though. I'm pretty sure I've had this for years. And I like to take that with a denser synthetic brush, but that still has a little bit of fluff to it. And I just, like, literally work my brush into the cream blush like that. I just, again, I work everything on the back of my hand. That way I don't go directly in with all that product that I picked up. Because if I went straight from here to my cheek, it's going to be super intense. So just warm it up on the back of your hand first. And then I like to apply it, like, right here. And then I work it down and then up. And the reason why I'm not working it directly up, I'm working it down here and then up, is because... I have these really bad bags here. Like I've just not been getting sleep. I think I'm just stressed. So when I was like going in with the blush over top of that, it just made me look a million years old. I've been like just trying to keep it lower and then work it like down here, almost like into my contour. I'm just trying to avoid my bag. Cause with blushes and highlights, they're gonna draw more attention. So if you like highlight or put blush over an area that you don't want attention to, it's just gonna draw attention. It's gonna do the opposite. I just take whatever's left on my brush and put that across my nose. I also like to work this on my eyelids. I know it feels weird like working a giant brush in your eye area, but it just like diffuses it in the most natural, but just beautiful way. And like I said, lately I've just been into super quick makeup. Also notice I'm holding the brush further down. You don't want to like go in with the brush like this and work it. You just wanna like lightly graze whatever's left. And again, when I'm working it from the tail, I'm working it back into my temple cause I wanna lift my face. And see, now I have like a really subtle, pretty eyeshadow. The powder that I've been loving is my Maybelline Fit Me in Claire. And what I've been doing is I like to really highlight this like inner part and down my nose. So I'll take the sponge that I used earlier and I'm just going to pick up some of that powder, kind of like press them on the back of my hand and then concentrate it right here and then bring it down. I'm also gonna do the same in here. I just want this area to be super highlighted and then I'm just gonna take a tiny bit and work it here just to again Lift some more. Then whatever is left on my brush, I'm just going to spread out. I'm trying not to load too much powder though because I don't want to lose that like glow that I have to my skin. So we're just taking like the bake that we have here and just like pushing it underneath. 
with a light hand just working it kind of back and forth. I'm not applying a ton of powder up here because I am starting to get those little forehead wrinkles. So I find that if I don't powder it, the wrinkles really show, but then if I powder too much, they also really show. So it's like I really have to have that happy medium. And then I like to take some powder on the tip of the brush and I just use that to kind of re-highlight the center of my... I'm going to take some more powder, tap off the excess, and just lightly sculpt underneath of my bronzer contour. But I'm not taking like a humongous amount of powder. I'm just doing a really light sweep because I want my skin to still feel natural. Once I have, right now I have this area powdered, I have this area powdered, I have my forehead powder. So the only part of my face that isn't powdered is my cheeks and my forehead. Now my cheeks, these, this area will get oily, but the reason I'm not powdering it is because I'm gonna go in with powder product. So I'm gonna go in with a powder bronzer right now to kind of set my cream contour, and I'm gonna go in with a powder blush. So there's really no point of me setting those areas if I'm gonna be using powder products anyway. So for my bronzer, you guys already know, I'm gonna use my Physicians Formula Bronzer. I recently picked up the Morphe M530 brush, and I've been really liking this for bronzer. It's fluffy, it's a natural fiber, so it's gonna like disperse it and keep it natural, but it has the right amount of density to it to where it'll still like put on color to where you will see it. Whereas if I went in with like a natural hair brush with longer bristles, it would really just, you would barely see the product. I'll work it in the brush, and then I'm just gonna start patting it back into my hairline. And then I do the same thing with my bronzer as I was doing with the cream products. I just like to kind of like work it on my eyelid. Because honestly, lately I have not been doing eyeshadow. Like this is what I do for my shadow. I pick up some bronzer on the side of the brush. And now I'm just going to lightly put that on the sides of my nose. I'm gonna lightly press this bronzer on my cream contour. I'm not rubbing it because since this area is not set, if I rub it, I would be like moving around the cream products that I just laid down. And I don't wanna do that. I don't want this area to look patchy at all. So I'm just patting it. I'm also working this along my jawline. So now I will apply my powder blush. You can use any powder blush. I'm gonna use this Milani one that I've been using literally in every video. I don't know why, I've just been enjoying this one lately. And it's like literally the same color as the cream blush that I use apply it here and then like I said I'm been working it down and then up that way I don't go over my under eye bags put a little on my nose and then also don't forget the eyelids so now what I'm gonna do is take a Morphe M536 brush this is a denser blending brush what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just push this powder into my skin it's a very light amount of powder but I just want to work it in there that way it sets it, but it still gives me a really smooth finish. On um, me personally, I find that when I just swipe powder away, it just honestly settles into like more crevices and I hate that. I like the airbrush finish that pressing the powder, you know, gives to your skin. I'm also going to press in the powder that I use to bake. And I also like kind of like work it up and it helps like diffuse my bronzer and blush. So sometimes after I bake, my contour is a little bit hard. So I just go back in with the brush that I applied my bronzer with. And just with a really light hand, no extra product, I'm just going to kind of like buff out the edges. As you can see, these pimples still don't want to hide. So I'll show you guys what I'll do in a couple seconds. So now I love a cream highlighter. I've talked about this in a million of my videos. But the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Beauty Light Wand has been my go-to for just like an all over, just beautiful lip from within finish. So again, with all of my creams, I like to work them in the back of my hand like that. I never apply it directly on my face just because I don't want it to be like, boom. So I take that with the same brush that I applied my blush with and I just work it on the side of the brush and just tap this on the high points of my cheeks. Again, using a super light hand. And I also like to kind of like bring it down wherever my face catches the light. That's where I want the highlight. Work it here, work it on my forehead. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and set everything in place using my Mario Badescu Rose Water Facial Spray. Sometimes I do this before the cream highlight, sometimes I do it after. Today my skin still felt tacky enough even after I applied my powders and all that. So that's why I went in directly with the cream highlight. But if my skin felt really like matte that day or drier, then I would spray this, let it sit for a little, and then go in with that cream highlight that I just applied. RIP to this highlight. I need to get another one of these because I did really like this one, but I'm taking my Charlotte Tilbury Bar Gold Highlighting Palette. I'm just gonna mix these two and I'm gonna go over top of where cream highlight. I just like to do a super light dusting of this just to, again, keep that glow because I love that glow. I feel like I can never have too much glow, but I don't like a harsh, sharp glow. I like for my whole skin to just feel like it is just healthy and glowing from within versus like a stripe of highlight. So because I like that, I like to take my highlight with a fluffy brush, a natural hair brush with longer hairs. And the longer hairs will allow me to not apply too much highlight or allow me to apply too concentrated. It's gonna just lightly diffuse it on my skin without looking like I have product just like thrown on there, if you know what I mean. So this is my MAC 137 brush. I just really lightly graze it. And again, I hold my brushes far down, that way I don't pick up too much product. If I were to apply a lot of pressure, it'd pick up way more product. You just wanna hold it further down, lightly graze the product. And then same thing when you're applying it, if you apply it like this, it's gonna pack on more. If you hold it further down and do a light sweep, it's just gonna give you like a veil of highlight. So I'm just lightly tapping. So whenever I wanna like step it up, if it's like, I don't know, a special occasion, I want it to feel like my makeup is done a little bit more. Now that I have this base, I don't need to layer a bunch of eyeshadow, so it just saves me so much more time. But if I want more definition, I will take this color in the Jaclyn Hill palette or any sort of like mustardy, middle, kind of like brown color. I like to take it with like a super fluffy brush just so I can do like a light graze of it on my eye. This is my JH35 brush by Morphe. Just graze it in my crease. Again, holding my brush further down, I'm just doing a soft wash of color. And I also like to push this up Toward like where we had that bronzer and then what I'll do if I just want a little bit of shimmer on my eye is I like to take like a bronze or I'll like mix like a bronze and a gold sometimes I'll just use like my same highlighting palette but I literally will just take it with my finger and like mix these two colors together literally any sort of like natural shimmer will work tap it on my eyelid it's okay if it goes up into the crease. I'm gonna show you what I do, like if it accidentally goes too high up. That brush that I was using earlier that had that leftover like brown color and just like buff this out. And then if I do my shadow and I just feel like my edges just need a little bit of cleaning up, I just go back in with my loose powder and my makeup sponge and I'll just use it to lightly clean up edges so just apply a little and then i'm just gonna buff it away right away just to clean it up the same color that we use in our crease this one and apply that with a pencil brush on my lower lash line Today I'm, gonna, I'm feeling a little highlight so i'm gonna mix the brightest color in the palette and a tiny bit of gold because i don't want my inner corner highlight to be too bright and I'm just gonna lightly tap this in my inner corner. I'm using like a fluffier sort of pencil brush that way it won't pack on too too much color and I also love applying that to the center and bringing it up to the brow. So now for brows, normally I love using a brow pencil however I literally just ran out of my Benefit Precisely My Brow and I need to pick another one up so can't use that, but I am gonna use this fully side of it to brush my brow hairs up. Oh, so now I'm gonna take my Anastasia brow powder. You can use like even a dark brown shadow, but I'm gonna take that with a like small definer angled brush. This one is by Sigma. It's like the perfect amount of density to where I can still get definition with a brow powder. Oh, my hairs, my brow hairs are just crazy. So like this just, is a true lifesaver. So I love using my CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow. I talk about this in pretty much every video. 
And this one is in light pale, so I like it because it helps kind of like soften up my brows, not make the color look so harsh. It is slightly lighter than my brows, but not too light. I'm just focusing it at the tail of my brow first because that way it'll deposit most of the product there. And toward the front, I like more of that fluffy brow, but toward the tail of my brow, I like for it to kind of taper into a more defined shape. I don't know why, I just do. So now what I like to do is I take my Physicians Formula Brown Liquid Eye Pen and I like to do like a little extended wing in my inner corner like just a little cat eye and I'm just doing that with the pencil like straight on just a little one and then I do a little line here so on a day to day basis I'll just do like a smaller line and do a line there, a line here and then do my mascara but whenever I have eyeshadow like this I will like do the full on wing And now we can do mascara. So for my mascara, you guys already know the combo I love. I love using my L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Primer mixed with my L'Oreal Bambi Lash in Dark Brown. I like to curl my lashes before and after I apply my mascara just to get like the most volume because honestly, I never wear false lashes, like ever. The only time I wear false lashes is literally when I'm filming, but other than that, I cannot be bothered to put them on. And I like for the primer to dry a little bit before I do the mascara. So that dries, I'm gonna do my lipstick. So lately, this Maybelline gloss and this Fenty clear gloss have been my go-to. I either do one or the other. The Fenty gloss literally leaves your lips like just the most glossy that I've ever seen. And then this Maybelline one, they are new and they give me such like KKW vibes, KKW beauty vibes. This is in the color Reef, and it's just like the most beautiful, like, summery coral color. It reminds me so much of MAC Please Me or like MAC Candy Box lip gloss, except this was only like six or seven bucks. And the consistency is so nice, it's not sticky. It has hyaluronic acid in it too, which I thought was really interesting, but it's still very opaque and you get like a thick wash of color. So you don't really need a lipstick with that lip gloss. So to line my lips, I'm just using whatever I could find in my makeup bag. Really doesn't matter, I feel like, when you have a gloss. But I'm just gonna use my MAC World Lip Pencil. Now I'm gonna apply that gloss. Oh, look how pretty that is. I don't know why, I've just been loving a super glossy lip lately. And whenever I'm feeling a little bit more definition, I'll go in with like a darker brown lip pencil. This one is by e.l.f. It was in the Retro Paradise Lip Kit. And I'll just lightly sketch the edges, like super lightly. It just gives a little bit more of a pop. So now my lashes are ready for mascara. Last but not least, whenever I have blemishes that don't want to hide, all I do is I take the same brown eyeliner that I was using and I'll do dots and turn them into beauty marks. I know, so revolutionary. Really not. Alex always makes fun of me when I do this because he's like, where'd those beauty marks come from this time? So that's what I'm going to do. And I like using this position formula one because it is very long wearing. It doesn't smudge on me. So I'm just going to do a little dot right here. Well, I already did it by accident. And I'll do one right here. And I always like to balance it out by doing like a dot on this side too. So I'll do a dot there too. And like up here. Now we got some beauty marks going on. Glam makeup look. It's honestly super simple. And I feel like so many times on YouTube we show like super glam looks but like you really can't wear them that many places without feeling like so over the top or actual. Like there's only a few occasions, whereas I feel like this is a glam look that you can wear to dinner with your family or on a date or things like that to where, you know, you feel done up, you feel beautiful, but it's not like too much or like taking over your face, you know what I mean? So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did happen to enjoy it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. But definitely don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when I upload. I love you all so much. I pray that you all stay safe and I will see you guys next time. Bye!